Minor League Baseball isn't entirely about baseball. It's community. It's the ability to spend a summer evening in any town USA watching a sport that is part of the fabric of America. And maybe, if you were lucky, one of those prospects on the field during any given evening would go on to become a star one day. Then, they would be your town star. The Bash brothers are still remembered in Medford, Oregon. Walla Walla, Washington still claims Tony Gwynn as one of their own. Across America, tiny towns have staked a small part of baseball's folklore for themselves. And even if their teams have long since gone, nothing can take that away from them. But mostly though, minor league baseball is root, root, root for the home team, a team to call your own. Look, minor league baseball has never been perfect over the years. Franchises have come and gone. Plenty of unscrupulous individuals have taken advantage of towns and fans over the decades. Despite that, America still loves it. With the Miners having experienced a resurgent over the past three decades, baseball's ultimate con man got himself involved. Rob Manfred is doing what those old time carnival grifters couldn't do, destroy minor league baseball. This series looks at how the sport went from America's last great carnival to an opportunistic con and what looks to be the eventual big boxification of the entire system. This is how the minor leagues were lost. Imagine baseball without John Smoltz or Mike Piazza, without Ken Griffey Sr. and in turn Ken Griffey Jr. The New York Yankees core four shrinks to a core one because Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, and Mariano Rivera never make it to the show. It's not just players, however. Managers and front office personnel are never given a chance to hone their craft. Kids in small towns across the country never get to see baseball up close and opt never to pursue the sport. Play-by-play -play announcers and media members lose valuable reps outside major market spotlights. The lost world of baseball would be a vast, expansive space. And now, with Major League Baseball's destruction of the minor leagues, those hypotheticals and what-ifs will become a reality in the years to come. Baseball owners were unified in their desire to shrink the minor leagues, but the entire premise of the concept was sold on false pretenses. When Houston Astros general manager Jeff Luno pitched the idea of a revamped minor league structure, it was done so in a disingenuous fashion that contained two key points to get everyone on board. The first point was that teams were much better at scouting and player development today than previously. There was no longer a need for these large farm systems. They were just unnecessary. That, of course, was an extremely self-serving point. While some franchises, such as Luno's Houston Astros and the Baltimore Orioles, have built streamlined player development and scouting operations, those were also created via massive, multi-year tanking endeavors. It also ignored the reality that there are numerous MLB franchises that would still benefit from quantity over quality in regards to prospects. That being said, no Major League Baseball general manager could come out and say that fact without looking incompetent in front of their boss. That leans into the second point of Luno's proposal to trim the minor leagues, the cost savings. Fewer teams meant less money spent. Even after handing out raises to those players remaining down on the farm, owners would most likely be better off financially. At the very least, all of those complaints about minor league wages would become a thing of the past without needing to actually increase expenditure. Luno, for his part, knew exactly the trap he was springing to the entire league. It had everything to do with eliminating competition. The fewer lottery tickets a team had down on the farm, the less likely they were to hit on one. That played to the strength of franchises like his Houston Astros, which had robust scouting and player development techniques. Perhaps there is no greater example of the faultiness to this logic than the 2016 MLB draft. The first round of that draft has produced zero all-stars. If you add the competitive balance and compensatory rounds of the 2016 MLB draft, that figure becomes one. That is the same number of all-stars selected in the 34th round of the same draft. Yet Major League Baseball still went ahead and shrunk the draft to 20 rounds in 2020. Who cares about David Bednar? 
that 34th rounder who is now a two-time National League All-Star and has led the league in saves. But wait, aren't Major League Baseball scouting departments not supposed to miss players like the Pittsburgh Pirates closer? Branch Rickey once said, from quantity comes quality. This is why he focused on building a farm system with the St. Louis Cardinals. At one point in time, his farm system had upwards of 40 teams. That was probably overkill, but the point remained the same. The more players you had under contract as part of your minor league system, the more likely you were going to find a quality player. It also recognized something important about the sport. Development of a baseball player has never been linear or even logical. It's really a numbers game, and the more lottery tickets you have, the better chance you have of winning. This is something that has proven to be true throughout the history of baseball, and losing the minor leagues means a lost world of baseball. Eliminating teams and reducing roster spots has had a knock-on effect. It cuts opportunities. Hall of Famers never get a chance to hone their skills. Future managers never earn valuable experience in baseball. The fathers of future big leaguers never share their love of the game with their sons. And for what? Short-term gain in the here and now? The long-term cost is far more significant. Mike Piazza was the last player selected in the 1988 MLB draft. He was taken by the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 62nd round. The pick was seen nothing more as a token gesture, as Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda was a family friend of the Piazzas. Even with that, there was still an opportunity available to him. We all know Piazza would reinvent himself in the minors as a catcher and eventually become a Hall of Famer. Kenny Rogers, Mark Burley, and Dallas Braden all threw perfect games despite being drafted after the 20th round. In today's minor league setup, it's highly dubious that any of these pitchers would even get the opportunity in the minor leagues to show a team what they could do. For Rodgers and Burley, that means teams would lose multiple time All-Stars. In the 1990 MLB draft, the New York Yankees selected Andy Pettit in the 22nd round and Jorge Posada in the 24th round. The team had also signed Mariano Rivera as an amateur free agent a while back. But in today's baseball, these fringe prospects would have likely been squeezed out by a limited number of roster spots teams now have for minor league players. Meanwhile, two of the best relievers in San Francisco Giants history were late round draft picks. Sergio Romo was taken in the 28th round, and Rob Nin was a 32nd round selection. Is that franchise better off having neither of these pitchers? Then there's the story of Ken Griffey Sr., who was picked in the 29th round of the 1969 Major League Baseball Draft. If he never gets that opportunity to play ball and eventually prove despite his low round draft pick status that he was actually a big league caliber player, his son never spends his childhood growing up around the major leagues and dreaming of following in his father's footsteps. The sport not only loses a really good player in Griffey Sr., but a generational talent in his son, Ken Griffey Jr. There are countless other players who share similar stories to those mentioned, but it's not just on the field where these losses are felt. Mike Schilt never even made it to the minors as a player, but his years down on the farm allowed him to ascend into a major league manager. Without the minor leagues, Joe Madden and Buck Showalter may never get an opportunity to learn what it takes to be a manager. And that is only scratching the surface. How many coaches have influenced players at all levels of the minor leagues? The instruction and support here are simply lost in MLB's restructuring. Then you have other elements of the game, maybe things you haven't necessarily thought about. Play-by-play -play announcers and sports media have been able to receive valuable reps through minor league baseball. Without it, there is no Jason Benetti who learned how to call a sport by serving as play-by-play -play announcer for the Syracuse Chiefs. Dave Fleming worked for the Visalia Oaks in Pawtucket Red Sox before eventually landing at ESPN. Even someone like legendary wrestling announcer Tony Schiavone can trace their origins back to minor league baseball. Then you have individuals like ESPN's Ryan McGee who spent a summer interning with the Asheville Taurus right after college. While that team may still be in existence right now, many of those same doors are closed. Voices championing the sport are no longer being developed and simply don't have the opportunity to do so anymore. 
Perhaps the biggest thing that baseball has lost here with the whittling down of the minors are those working behind the scenes to make it all possible. Those who love the sport to its core. No one gets into minor league baseball to become rich. They almost always do so for a love of the game. And those who spent years and decades building minor league baseball into the viable thriving ecosystem it has become are now leaving. Ballpark Digest has mentioned several times the minor league brain drain that's now being seen. Those who come up with the quirky promotions and campaigns are moving on to different pastures anew. Those who spent countless hours making baseball accessible to legions of fans across the previous decades and throughout the country are simply not there anymore. The issue with those making decisions on minor league reform are individuals who have never really spent time down on the farm. They came from business school or PhD programs and see baseball as a math equation or theory. Their computations don't factor in the unintended consequences of their actions. It is not just the players in any given draft who may be lost. It is future generations of baseball players, fans, and personnel. It's the people working to inspire the next wave of the sport at the grassroots level. All of this is being sacrificed for cost savings. So that 30 owners who are part of an $8 billion industry can pocket a few hundred thousand dollars extra each year. Funds that will never be reinvested back into the game, simply a black number on a ledger somewhere in an accounting office. For better or worse, MLB has imposed itself as the steward of baseball. Not just Major League Baseball, but the entire sport at the professional level. That means taking care of it and building it into something better than what was left by the previous generation. Yet youth participation in baseball continues to decline. A Washington Post survey asking Americans about their favorite sport to watch on television found that only 9% of respondents said baseball. The same number as soccer, an unthinkable reality 20 years ago. Meanwhile, the World Series, the sport's crown jewel, is hemorrhaging viewers and has become nothing more than an afterthought most years. A bunch of guys fighting over a piece of metal. Minor League Baseball isn't about player development. Sure, that is part of it, but not the only thing. What Minor League Baseball should be viewed as is an opportunity at the grassroots level to sing the praises and highlight the best of baseball. A chance to connect with communities and people. Who cares if the majority of minor league players don't have a chance of reaching the show? They are developing something perhaps more important than that, the next generation of the sport. MLB owners and front offices though, they don't recognize this. They only see the numbers, the cash. Paying minor leaguers a fair wage should have been seen as an investment in baseball and crucially, the sports tomorrow. Instead, those leading major league baseball have shirked at that responsibility. They are not stewards of baseball. They are strip miners, extracting every last bit of value from the sport and leaving nothing in this destructive wake. While Major League Baseball was focusing on shrieking the minor leagues and reducing its footprint in favor of profits, more changes were happening behind the scenes as part of its takeover of minor league baseball. The biggest impact of all of this is one most folks probably aren't even aware of. A little publicized operational rule change implemented by MLB changed ownership guidelines. Not only had America lost minor league baseball, but any avenues to reclaiming it were being shut off. In the final part of our series, we explore how Rob Manfred and MLB are turning minor league baseball into nothing more than a hollow corporation, the baseball equivalent to a big box store, Hellbent, on closing the sporting equivalent of Main Street.